I will welcome to the show Sama Huruwai Siga. Can you hear us, uh, Sama? Uh, yes, I can. There she Hi, is. Ben. You can Thank you hear us. Me on. Not a problem. So before we get into it, um, I kind of want to go through chronologically what you said there. Um, what, what is the Aotearoa Liberation League? I know you've been on before, uh, but I, just to give um, listeners a kind of new uh, idea of it, sort of how, what did it start off as and what's it kind of morphed into? Hmm. Yeah, so first of all, to your comment about um, weeing um, on our <laughs> political impartiality, we don't pretend to be impartial. Uh, we are very, very opinionated. Um, we are very open about our opinions, such as being anti-capitalist, decolonial. These are things we're very open about. So if there are political parties that align with that, we will openly support them. And when Te Pāti Māori asked Pere to join in as a list MP, uh, and they said, hey, we're going to put you low on the list, you probably won't make it in, um, but your support would uh, be good, we agreed because we like their policies. So... So yeah, we don't pretend to be were, impartial. Were you guys angling for that with uh, the, um, the the sort of supporters and the following that you amassed, some sort of endorsement for a political party? No, and um, we're not really interested in being politicians ourselves because we think we can do more from the outside. However, Te Pāti Māori did present uh, more progressive policies than we've seen before and we wanted to show our support and so this was a small way that we thought we could show our, um, our support and that's why we agreed mm -hmm. for Peter to go on. Okay, well let's get into that that sort of piece of commentary you did there um, because I think that you are an interesting group and as I say you've grown in prominence and are sort of one of these uh, commentary groups that have uh, have arose and are in in some ways attempting or, or, or you know attempting to influence people's perspectives during the election period. Now you seem to be claiming in the start of that that the result of this election is at least in part down to interference from New Zealand's wealthy. Um, does any part of you accept the possibility that actually Nationals' win could simply you know come down to persisting poor governance from the Labour Party over the last six years in a country that you know wants firmer economic management? Absolutely. You know, there is no amount of money that wealthy people could have put in to their right-wing parties that would have helped them uh, win the election if Labour wasn't terrible, you know what I mean? So Labour being terrible is first and foremost the reason that they lost. You will not find me disagreeing with that. Right. Uh, how, however, it is also undeniable that there was a deliberate effort by people who have a lot of money to influence the election uh, they haven't been secretive about that. This has been happening out in the open. Um, like I mentioned in another video, uh, we have the richest person in this country, Graham Hart, worth $13 billion, which is approximately, and it's hard to narrow it down exactly, but approximately around what 30% of the population has. Um, or we can go into a more specific fact. Half of the population... Okay, but sorry, can I take you back to that issue with Graham Hart? What, what's that got to do with um, the sort of victory of the centre-right government? Ah, yes, of course. So just to finish my point, about half of the population has around $24 billion. This one person alone has $13 billion, right? We have no limits on political donations in New Zealand. This is different to mm -hmm. most other uh, comparable countries. So this person, one individual, he donated around $700,000 to New Zealand First, National and ACT. Now me, I'm an individual just like him. I'm an opinionated person just like him. There's no way I could dream of having political influence to that level. Mm. So that difference in my ability to influence elections and his ability to influence elections, in my view, is grossly undemocratic. And you look at Max Rashbrook's report into political donations. These people aren't just giving political donations for no reason, right? This person is not stupid. They're a billionaire. They know what they're doing. They wouldn't just throw money at an initiative if they didn't think they would get something back from it, right? In the well, Max Rashbrook yep. report about, about political donations, he shows that people who donate get home visits from prime ministers. And I'm not just talking right-wing parties. They get home visits from prime ministers uh, of Labour, of Helen Clark. Uh, they get them across the board. They have lunches with them. Now, I would dream of getting to have a lunch with a prime minister to express my views, let alone on a repeated basis. Uh, another thing that came out in that report is that donors admitted that they donated because they thought they might be able to at least 
somewhat influence policy. Mm. Uh, All so of this, though, I mean, Summer, is completely I'm within the realms of the law. Uh, there is no mm -hmm. law against doing this, and there are plenty of people who donate to sort of all political parties. I just want to go back to your point earlier about how you would only dream of having political influence. I would bring your attention to the fact that you and your partner have, or your husband, have started an activism group that's amassed, you know, a significant following of people, and what you say is listened to uh, on a weekly, daily, minute-by-minute -minute basis by, you know, a not insignificant amount of, of people. Uh, that is, in a way, uh, a political influence, and especially the content like that that you're putting out during an election period. You know, it, it is not impossible for uh, average people without large amounts of money to influence how people think and, you know, how in the end they might vote. Absolutely, and I'm so thankful for social media to give us a way to at least contribute, um, even though there is huge asymmetry. Like, let's just put things into perspective. Peter and I used our savings to start this group, uh, money that we ma have made through previous mahi. Uh, we have only received one grant in all this time, a $20,000 grant. Other than that, that we received... That was from a youth movement fund. Um, so they were specifically giving funds to radical youth, right? Was uh, it the government-supported the group that gave you that money? No, 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 no. Never, this is a thing I, I'm really glad you asked. We've never received government support. Okay, right? never received uh, government supporting. Never imagined that we would because we criticise Labour all the time. We, uh, uh, anyway, um, I'm really glad that social media gives us this ability to at least present something, but you can't deny the asymmetry. We receive from public donations $1,000 a month. Now, you give me the $13 billion and I can guarantee you that my voice and my partner's voice would go a lot further. So, yes, we do get uh, public views and given the very little that we have, both in experience and in money, I think that that is a testament to how needed an independent political uh, voice is in this country. Mm. And, um, you know, you can look at the platform, for example. The platform is funded by a rich family, the right family, who actually mm. does receive hundreds of millions of dollars from the government and through various loopholes are able to give it, to transfer it between their companies and avoid paying tax on it. Um, I'm not an expert in, in this In terms space. of the and way, actually, um, Summer, in terms of the way money can influence the setup of uh, political systems and influence parties, you will be aware, of course, that the... Māori Party is uh, funded at least in part by uh, money which is funneled through the Waipuanata Trust being John Tamahiri's charity uh, and have been pinged actually uh, for that. And actually, I'm not too sure we must get back to them whether or not that uh, amount had been paid back in full because that was not breach of, um, I think it was the Charities Commission rules around political donations. So uh, I, I would push back on the idea that it's just the what you refer to as rich right-wing parties that are doing that i think again uh you have to look at the asymmetry for example let's look at the act party they made four times more than labor despite polling at around eight percent okay so there is clearly something going on here that's not reflecting the groundswell the actual wide public opinion because the donations don't match the level of support. So Māori Party, what they received in political donations is pittance in comparison It wasn't political to donations, it was Tamahiri funneling his, the money through the charity to the party to sort of okay. fund it. Yeah. Right. Which, which is, is actually worse, really, when you think about it, than somebody receiving political donations because they've got policy that matches up with how they feel. I completely disagree with that. If we have the richest person in this country funneling hundreds of thousands of dollars into right-wing parties versus someone who's it's actual actually their party, obviously they're going to back themselves in the support. No, That's but, one, no, but one it doesn't matter if they back themselves. It's illegal. What he did was illegal. You can't, you I know. don't know if it's illegal. It, it, well, it's it was illegal, illegal because they, they received correspondence from the Charities Commission saying you need to pay that back. But anyway... Um, that's all right. We anyway, won't, I, I, I'll, I just, I'll let you finish that point and then I do want to move on. Yeah. I just want to finish my point. Yeah, go on. What the Māori Party made in total, I, I would really like you to actually bring up the figures when you talk about stuff like that. It was honestly pittance in comparison to what they I don't have the figures in front of me. I should have grabbed them. But I remember them being in the tens of thousands versus millions, okay? So I think... When you're comparing the asymmetry, it's really, really, really important because it shows that there is
uh, a difference in the level of support people get that isn't dependent on how many people support them, but rather who is supporting them. Okay, yep, I get you. Um, moving on to uh, mm -hmm. a, a little bit further through that video. Throughout the commentary in that, uh, in that clip, you refer to they a lot. They. Who is they in this context? Is it rich? I presume it's rich people. They have given this. They have done that. They have influenced this. Okay. Um, I'm talking about a very small percentage of the population who hold hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions, like in the case of Graham Hart. And I, I gave examples. I'm not sure if you saw the other video on this topic. But Graham Hart donating to these parties, okay? His daughter holding a party for, um, what's her name, the ACT Party uh, lady, um, Brooke Van Velden, sorry, escaped me, um, having a, a fundraising party for her and presumably other wealthy people at her house. And then Graham Hart's daughter is also married to um, Kate Hawksby's brother, Kate Hawksby's brother. Oh, and Mike You seem to be an expert on the familiar relations of a lot of these people. Oh, because... Like, I just think it's really perverse to have wealthy people influencing public opinion in okay. a way... and that's that what I want to get to. So that benefits them personally and not the majority. So that's who they are. They're wealthy people, which you are suggesting have, uh, you know, there's a kind of a cohort of those in New Zealand who are hyper-political uh, and looking to influence politics. You go on to say they have put in Jenna Lynch on News Hub front and centre. What evidence do you have that, uh, you know, a rich cohort of wealthy, hyper-political New Zealanders have any say in who News Hub decide to promote to the position of political editor? I should make it clear for your audience that I am just a political commentator. Like, I'm not trying to pretend to be an official journalist. I'm not okay. um, operating under any, any journalistic standards. However, it is my opinion that if you have someone who is the lead political editor of News Hub and they're married to the Axe Party chief of staff, that seems to me to be a, a perversion of democracy. And if it was the other way around, if someone was married to the Māori Party chief of staff, leading News Hub political editor, I would expect you rightfully to criticise that. And I would okay. criticise that. Because but I'll take you wrong. back to the and question because I don't think you quite answered it. You made the suggestion that the, they, in this context referring to a wealthy group of New Zealanders seeking to influence the election, had put in Jenna Lynch on News Hub front and centre. How, through what mechanism do those rich people have any say whatsoever on how Jenna Lynch gets the political editor at News Hub? It's a good question and I would love for journalists and... Okay, like but you made that inference in your video. My, my, the reason that I made that inference is because it's a matter of fact that she's married to the ex-party chief of staff. It's a matter of fact that they are private funders of News Hub. It's a matter of fact that they were uh, pushing for policies the, the Act Party pushed for policies that help the wealthy people. Putting all these two, to, to, all of these facts together, I did make the inference inference that wealthy people have influenced the fact that the lead political editor of News Hub is not a Māori Party affiliate, but an Act Party affiliate. I mean, these things. Do you think? Do, can I just ask you personally? Do you just think it was a complete accident? Uh, I think New Zealand is a small country. And those who are politically active are probably attracted to those who are politically active, as you uh, were to your partner. And um, but you as a result, ever, you, you can get some... But as, a, as, a, as a political editor, would they ever even consider that? Well, I just don't think that there is any correlation between... Uh, Jenna Lynch being married to ACT Party's chief of staff and being promoted to political editor. And I don't think that you could make the claim that this rich group of New Zealanders have any power over who that they put into that position. And then when I ask you about that, you say, oh, that's a good question. But, you know, you didn't really phrase it as a question in that video. You, you made the suggestion that you had some sort of information that that was what they'd actually done and that that was a matter of fact. And look, I know that you're not necessarily an expert on... on on that or a political commentator, but I think that you have, you know, you have a, a significant following, as I mentioned earlier, and if you're going to put out videos like this in an election year where it could very well influence what people think and how they might vote in the end, you have some sort of responsibility to make, you know, claims that are actually backed up. Okay, I'm going to leave it up to your viewers to decide whether my inference was fair. To me, that inference was fair because the ACT Party pushes policies that benefit rich people who are funding them. 
She's married to the ex-party chief of staff, and she's a lead political editor in a very, very widely watched news. Uh, my inference is that it was the influence of wealthy people that put her in there. Whether people think that's fair or not, um, I'm going to leave that up to them. Okay, so what about...